Now it's time for the big one, folks. It is the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup. It's 3.30 on the 15th of March. And before we hear what the panel think, the most popular winner of this race undoubtedly will be Hewick. And earlier today, we got the views of Shark Hanlon about Hewick. And hopefully those views are going to appear on the screen right now. So I'm delighted to be joined by one of racing's great characters, John Shark Hanlon. I'm going to jump straight into the questions, if that's okay with you, Shark. No problem whatsoever. I'm sorry you're not with you tonight, but there's nothing we can do about it. I have another engagement. And I imagine all systems are go now for Hewick and his prep for the Cheltenham Gold Cup. How did he come out of the King George, and has he been working well? He came out of King George, brilliant, so he did. Couldn't believe it after two days there. He was as fresh as could be. And um, I thought that he got a tough race, but just I think all the horses went so fast in, 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 the, in the King George that they played into his barrow and he came home. Came home fresh and he's after doing a couple bits of work. He was in uh, Nace, done a bit of work in Nace the other day, worked very well. And I had him in Burris uh, yesterday and he'd done another bit. So listen, one or two more bits of work gets him ready and please God, I think he improved since last year. So hopefully, um, I'm hoping he did anyway. But um, And I'm hoping the weather is that drying up a small bit because his weather will break her heart at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. That was the next question. I mean, the ground probably wasn't perfect for him at Cheltenham last year, but he was still in with a big chance of placing coming down to that famous second last. What are his ideal conditions? And if he gets them, what do you think is his chance this year? His ideal condition is good ground. And I was between mines last year with a runner or not on it, but he was still running a cracker. He came down the hill. I wouldn't have swapped him with any other horse. And um, Jordan Ganford was very sick often when he came back in. He said to me, Shark, he says, he comes off the bridle in every race. And then he comes back on. He said he was after coming off the bridle, but he came back on it. So um, they, you never know what would have happened. I think he would have been in the first three if he had to stand up. And it's been a great result on the ground that wouldn't be fully right for him. So I think the only chance we have beaten Gam uh, Willie's horse is if we can get proper good ground. And if the weather gods are smiling on us, he's 14 to 1 with Boyle Sports at the moment. I think everyone in the audience would like a nice price winner on Gold Cup Day. Do you think Hewick is the horse they should be backing? I do, yeah. I think that he's a, he's a great price. Like, he's in double figures there. And if Paul Nichols or Willie or Gordon had him after he win the King George, he'd probably be 8 to 1. But I think on the day, he won't be any more than 8 to 1. And you mentioned Willie there. I mean, you're not too far away from Plus Sutton. Have you heard any whispers on how any of their runners are going to fare? Hopefully you're not here and Gallop and Deschamps is working the house down anyway. Is they have me little spying over there so I'm on top of the ditch watching everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, Willie is very happy with Willie is very happy with all the horses, he said. Um, they're all coming on nicely. So um, Willie wouldn't let much out. There don't be much in the house out of that yard, you know. Um, I heard nothing about uh, and even really only that they're all coming on nicely and away from your own yard Shark uh, do you think there's a good thing lurking at Cheltenham and who do you think it could be I think last amount is, is a certainty for the mayors I'm sure um, I'd say that that uh, English are going to struggle um, if they had two or three winners over the week I think that's as much they're going to have um, in, the, in the English camp but the Irish camp like you have Henry with a couple of, of good horses. You have um, Willie then with the team. Like Willie could have 10 winners. You know himself. I think I speak for everyone at Boyles and everyone in the audience when we wish yourself and Hugh Gall the very best at Cheltenham. And let's hope for another chapter in his fairy tale story. Thanks, Mil this, thanks very much. And I'm sorry I'm not with you tonight because it's just worked out when you said it to me. I had something else on. Um, the sport, sports awards in, in Carlo and I got invited in so maybe we'll get one no worries I think you've given us plenty of ammunition for a winner anyway so thanks a million thanks very much to Brian and to Shark uh, for joining us tonight I think that that other engagement that he had that he told us about about four times in the video I think he was picking up the people of the year award in, in Carlo or something I think yeah, I think he's he's won it. I think Willie is a multiple winner, but this year Shark won it. So very best of luck to Shark and Hewitt. What a great story. And you can follow the story with Boyle Sports because they're going to be launching a new initiative where they're going to be following Shark and Hewitt 
for the next couple of months and maybe even towards the King George next season. So he's going to be running the Grand National potentially and the Gold Cup. So plenty of interesting stuff coming your way from Boyle Sports about Hewick. But Johnny Deneen, we all know you don't believe in fairy tales. Any chance of an old fairy tale here with Hewick? Look, I, I wouldn't have fancied him in the King George, to be honest. You, I'd give it no chance and I'd probably be giving it close to no chance here too but that wouldn't mean it wouldn't win it wouldn't mean it wouldn't win but look sure he's doing well to be there and he's like 16 to 1 chances they win they win on a regular enough basis so look he has to have some sort of a chance I personally don't fancy him but that wouldn't mean anything and you don't fancy Hewick but you don't fancy Gallop in the shops no I just think that he's short I mean there's a, there is a, a few as we've gone through the, a lot of the races a lot of skinny ones there and, and um, this is the one skinny one I wouldn't go near back in any way definitely not I just think there is enough of cover here to, to chance your arm and maybe opposing this one anyway I do think there's horses like Shishkin fast or slow even Jerry Kalam is surely better than he ran at Christmas and you have the fact that there's going to be horses like like um, the re, the real whacker and a high senor and maybe like contesting the lead it's going to be an end to end gallop and I think he has very little margin for error uh, and and I do think it'll be quite a reasonable size field and he, he won't need to do anything wrong I, I think he'll need to improve on last year's run to win I think that Brave Man's game wouldn't like he's a 20, 20 to 1 shot in this race where, where he jumped he'll beat him seven lengths hey, but he jumped the last alongside him all the same now and Hewick was hanging around too I, I, I have a feeling last year's race wasn't a brilliant race I do think he's had a few hard races this year too that he didn't have last year. He's, he definitely had, he has to have had hard races in both days in Leperstown. I just think there's at even money or five to four against him, whatever price he is, he, he'd been around 11 to 10. I just think you have enough going for you to close your eyes and take a chance here. <laughs> so four to one fast or slow, seven to one Shishkin, eight to one Jerry Kalam. Of those three, who's his biggest danger? Faster slow? Look, faster slow because he's guaranteed to start. But if Shishkin did get up, get away on terms, I'd say he's possibly the, the biggest danger to uh, to the favourite. Now, he is a horse that at least the favourite has never beaten before, whereas he has nearly beaten all the rest of them. Before I let you go, is there a chance, though, that Gallop in the Champs is this w- once-in-a-lifetime type of horse where he could just be an absolute superstar? Look, he looked a superstar at Christmas, but some of his other runs, it doesn't make him a superstar. I mean, he did get beaten in Punchestone. He got beaten to John Durkin. Okay, well, he won well enough the last day, didn't he? He was as, as impressive as he was at Christmas. And look, it's not easy to win back-to-back Gold Cups. So I'd be against him anyway. I'll take my chances. It's anyway. not easy. Album photo did it. He did, but you go back to best mate 20 years before that. Lots of horses haven't done it at the same time. Okay, you're against Gallop and the Champs. Yeah, I would. You will be laying him on the day. Absolutely, yeah. David Casey, the counter argument for Gallop in the Shams, please. He's been there, he's done it, he's beat most of them. Um he was very, very good at Christmas. He was very, very good in the Dublin Racing Festival. I don't see where the chink is. So um yeah, I think he's in great order and I think if he turns up that way, yeah, he's the one they all have to beat. What makes him so good? Why is he you know According to Racing Post ratings, I think the best Gold Cup winner in the last decade anyway. Yeah, yeah. What makes him so I wouldn't worry about that, no. Ratings-wise, but um, is he better than what's on the card at the moment? And I'd say yes. So that's what makes him good, I think. Yeah. Okay, he's just better than them. Gavin Cromwell, does Gallop in the Champs win back-to-back Gold Cups? Yeah, I think he does. Um, uh, fast or slow, look, he's just not good enough to beat him, I think, but... Uh, He's going to make a race of a Chishkin. If he does jump off, uh, I'd say is probably the one that could be second to. And I think I think Huey can run a credible race and, and I'd give him a place chance. Mm. But um, it's very hard to see past the favourite if they can get him there in one piece. Uh, David, I passed on the, the mic there without asking you about Monkfish, who you think will run here. I know Willie said it is medium morning that he is likely to run in this race. He's leaning towards it. Is Is this the Monkfish we used to know? Uh, it's hard to know. It's very hard. He had such a long time off, but he he did win well in Gorn. I thought it was a weak enough race. Um, he wouldn't have been fully tuned for Gorn, so I think there's improvement there to come. And you know, he could he could run a race, but um, I wouldn't be going shouting from the treetops telling people to back one like that. But um, I wouldn't stop anybody either if they wanted to have something to train him, you know. So, um, he was a very good horse at one stage, but he has obviously had a lot of injuries. Okay, that's monkfish. Uh, Robbie Perry, you've won a Gold Cup. You know what it takes to win a Gold Cup. Can Gallop and the Shams go back-to-back? 
I think he can. I thought that performance at Christmas was when there was question marks. He beat beating him punch time and beating him to John Durkin, but then came out at Christmas, changed the tactics. He won the Gold Cup last year when everything didn't go according to plan. Um, Paul had to change tactics very early on in the race. Um, I think he'd be ridden more positively this year, and I think he'd be very, very hard to beat. I do think Shishkin is a big danger. I think Shishkin is a very, very good horse. I thought he'd have won the King George, but for stumbling two strides after the second last, he was unlucky. Um, and I think he's a big, big danger. And I also think Gentleman's Game has an each way chance if he gets cut in the ground. I think he's a very, very good horse. He lacks experience for a Gold Cup. But I think he's a very good horse. I think he's got his stamina in abundance. I think he has an each way chance in the race. 16 to 1 trained by a master in mouse. You haven't mentioned Jerry Kalam. Will we see a better Jerry Kalam at Cheltenham than we saw at Leperson, do you think? Yeah, we're going to have to. Um, if we see, if he's a £10 better horse, he only gets beaten eight lengths by Galloping Deschamps. So, um, like, I met Jack on the way back in that day and I said, well, and he said to me, no excuses. So, he didn't jump. He jumped very satisfactorily in Leperstown. Um, he was just beaten by an exceptional horse on the day. I know Gordon and the team feel that he didn't run his race, um, but he's got to improve a hell of a lot to to beat Gallop and Deschamps. Or Gallop and Deschamps has got to retreat. So, um, yeah, I I just think Gallop and Deschamps can be hard to beat. You think Gentleman's Game could finish ahead of Jerry Colombia? Yeah? I do. Yeah, I just think Gentleman's Game is a brilliant jumper. Um, he, I know he lacks experience for for a race like this, and it probably is going to be a big field. It's not going to be the forerunner Charlie Hall that he won in in Weatherby. So, um, it's going to be a big ass for him, but. Touch wood, if everything goes according to plan, he's having a good run. Um, Mouse is very happy with him, and there's no one better than Mouse to tune a horse for the festival, as we all know. So, um, yeah, if you've been a look on his side, he'd have an each way chance in the race. Brilliant. So, some positivity around Gentleman's Game in the Gold Cup, currently a 16 to 1 shot with Boyle Sports. Tony Keenan, another odds on shot. This time, it's the defending champion in the Gold Cup, Gallop in the Champs, player lay. Uh, Lee, I think Johnny's kind of outlining a lot of good reasons why, why to be against him. If he does pitch up in the form of Leperstown at Christmas, he will win. I don't think any of them can reach that ceiling, but it's just whether he will or not. Um, I think his jumping is still a little bit of a worry. Um, he didn't jump great here now last last season, kind of got a bit further back than ideal. I was going to take a chance at one that he hasn't run against, uh, Korak Rambler. I've backed him without the favour, I've backed him each way. Um, he's a very good record offence over Cheltenham. He's, he's three from three. He's the kind of horse you can just drop out the back and ride a race on. You know, I think a lot of these might well be the second and third best horse in the race, but they're going to be ridden to win it. Whereas I think Corrick Rambler is going to be ridden a little bit with the entry in mind and ridden a bit to come home. So I definitely wouldn't be one bit surprised if he was able to get into the, the first three or four. And also given a nice mention by Mick Fitzgerald earlier on in the show, uh, Corrick Rambler 16 to 1 up Wild Sports as well. So that's the goal. Talk.